Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about how to encode information in an AM wave and an FM wave. So maybe you don't know what those things are or how this works. That's exactly what I'm going to be showing you today. And I'm going to use examples. So this is appropriate for a physics or an AP physics or a physical science class or for general interest. If you've ever wondered how information is encoded in waves and we send out that information through radio towers and people are able to hear music and broadcasts and so on, this is going to explain how this works. So first of all, let's start with our information wave actually. And so that's the information that we want to send. So this could start out like a sound, for instance, especially if we're going to use an AM wave as an example. And then that sound is translated into a transverse wave. So a transverse wave is like this, where the medium moves at right angles to the direction of the wave itself. So we have that sound that we want to encode in another wave. So you could say, why do we want to do that? Well, the carrier signal is important because this is a higher frequency wave, which means we have a higher amount of energy and it can be broadcast for much longer distances from a radio tower. If we tried to broadcast this wave down here, this information signal, this could not be broadcast because you would need a radio tower that would be like half a mile high or something like that, something crazy like that. It simply does not have enough energy to be able to transmit. So you need something with a higher frequency and a higher energy. So what we do is we take this information and we encode it into the carrier signal or the carrier wave. And so I wanna show you two ways that this is done for today. There are more ways, but this will help you to understand how information gets transmitted through radio waves. So let's go ahead and get to it. First of all, I do want to take our information that we want to work with, and I'm going to give some labels here so we can talk about these meaningfully. So A, B, C, and D just to start with. And so that's going to correspond to A, B, C, and D down below. And so I want you to think to yourself, all right, this is going to be a relatively high value. This is going to be a middle value, and this is going to be a low value in terms of the amplitude of the transverse wave information that we want to encode. And so based on that, we're going to make an AM wave that is going to be symmetric. So we're going to have this be a high value, a mid value, or a medium amount of amplitude, and then a low, relatively low amount. And because it's symmetric, we're going to draw this this way. All right. And so that means that we want to encode information about letter A right here. Well, it's got a medium or a mid amount of amplitude that we want to encode. So we're going to start right here and right here. And that's because this is going to be a symmetric wave that we're going to draw. Next for B, it's got a low amount for the information wave or information signal. So we're going to just kind of trace out the outline of the amplitude that I will draw in a bit. So this is going to be our low amount. Now notice as we go from B to C, we're going to go from a relatively low amount to a relatively high amount. So I'm going to draw that. And again, this is not the wave. This will make more sense in a moment. Please stick with me for 30 seconds and you will understand a lot more in just a moment. And then going from C to D, what's going to happen is you go from a high, relatively high amplitude or amounts to a relatively lower amount. All right, and the next thing I want to do is I want to draw a wave. And this wave is going to have the outline that I have drawn previously. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is actually pretty hard to do, but you want to do it also in such a way that you're trying to draw the frequency to be basically the same. And you could say, how do I do that? Well, how you do that is you would draw it in such a way that the wavelength is going to be shown to be the same. So that's not the prettiest wave, but that's actually a good example of how an AM wave can have encoded information in the carrier wave. And so here we have our modulated wave, you could say. This is our modulated wave. And how is it modulated? Well, it's an amplitude modulated wave, meaning we've taken the amplitude and we've changed it, but we're encoding all of the information that's in the blue wave into the red wave, forming the green wave. And next, what I want you to do is I'm just going to label this as E, F, and G over here. And I want you to anticipate what you are going to see. So what do you think this is going to look like? If you want to pause, now is a good time to do that. Well, as we go from D to E, what's going to happen is you go from a middle amount of amplitude down to a low amount of amplitude over here. And then as you go from E to F, 
you're going to have a relatively low amount to quickly have a relatively great amount. So I'm going to try to draw the outside of the amplitude of the wave. And then as we go from F to G, you're going to have a relatively high amplitude encoded to a medium amplitude. So next, what I want to do is try to draw that wave. And as you can see, I am not an artist, but this, again, I think this is a fair representation of what a student could do. Maybe you can do better, maybe you can't, but that's the concept. That's how you're going to be able to do this. Let's just do two more real quick and finish this out. If we go from G to H and then H to I, what do you expect to see for this modulated wave? As we go from G to H, we're going to go from a medium amplitude encoded informational wave down to a low amplitude. And then we go from H to I, it's going to be an increasing amounts as we go from H to I. And so I'll try to draw the symmetric form of that. And then as we cross from I, it's going to go back down over here. So let me draw the remainder of this wave. Very good. And so that's how you would encode the information from the blue wave into a red wave. It turns out that these AM waves, you may have heard these on the radio before. Usually these are like religious programming or news programs or political programs. They have a lot more static. Part of the reason is because you have a receiver that's receiving at a certain frequency. By the way, I should mention that that the frequency is supposed to be held constant and so is the wavelength as well. They are supposed to be held as being constant. What we're modulating or changing is going to be the amplitude here. So that's how amplitude modulated waves work or AM waves. What I do want to show you next is how a frequency modulated wave works. So let's take the same data and change it into a frequency modulated wave. So in this case, again, we have a middle or a medium amounts in terms of our encoded wave information here. This is going to be a relatively high value, and then this is going to be a relatively low value. And now we don't want to modulate the amplitude. We actually want to modulate the frequency. So here's my question. What do you think is true for the amplitude for a frequency modulated wave? What do you think? Well, if we're going to change and encode information in the frequency, it actually turns out that we're going to keep the amplitude the same the entire way through. So I'm going to try to draw the outline of the wave in the same spirit as what I did previously for the AM wave. So here's the FM wave, at least the outskirts of it. Next, we're going to say, all right, so going from A to B over here, we're going to go from a medium amount to a low amount. So let me show you how you would do this you would have a relatively higher frequency going to a relatively lower frequency as we go from A to B. And then as we go from B to C, so our C is going to be about at this point, we're going to go from a relatively low frequency or a greater wavelength to a higher frequency. So, and it's a rather abrupt change. So it's going to look something like that. And going from C to D, this is going to be from a relatively high amount to a relatively low amount. So let me show you what that would look like. We're going to stretch it out a bit. And then next, I want you to think about what you would expect to see from E to F and then to G. So try to anticipate going from D to E and then E to F and F to G. What do you think you're going to see here? These are tightly put together, so it's going to be a little bit harder to draw this. But what you have is going from a medium amount to a very low amount for E. So I want to stretch out that wavelength. And then quickly in E, we're going to go to a very high frequency at F. And then we're going to go back to a medium frequency as we go over here going from F to G. Now the last couple that I want to show as an example, and I hope you can anticipate what I'm going to show you here, going from G to H, we're going to go from a medium frequency wave to a low frequency wave. So here's our H, here's our I, so medium frequency wave to a low frequency wave. We want to stretch it out, and then after we pass H, it's going to go from a low frequency wave to quickly become a much higher frequency wave. That's what we want to show at I. And then it's going to stretch out more as we finish this off. So those are two ways of how radio stations can transmit information. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.